Well, we often talk about more um, interesting and exciting industries on a Friday afternoon, and we'd like to welcome Tom Waterhouse to the show today. He's an Aussie betting icon, also the Chief Investment Officer at Waterhouse VC, which in January, uh, which feels like a lifetime ago for many of us, uh, they inked a deal with Betmakers. Now, to find out how that's fared in the golden age of pandemics and much more, we're delighted to say Tom joins us live here in the studio at Barangaroo. Tom, welcome to Ausbiz. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks, David. It's been an exciting year for everyone, but a particularly exciting year for you. Tell us about this fund, um, why you've launched it, and what you're looking to do here. Oh, we've been um, launched for a bit over a year, and, and really my whole life um, has been around gambling. My great grandfather, grandfather, dad were all bookies, and I've grown up in the in the betting industry, and and uh, from being an on-course bookie to launching TomWaterhouse.com to selling it to William Hill to running that business to then launching a tipping business and I just thought well my only focus in investing has been in gambling I don't know about tech stocks or, or banking or mining and um, quite a lot of the members that we had um, said look what do you like in the gambling space America's opened up which company should be investing in I just thought well I'm investing myself in the gambling space why not set up a fund go through it was a bit of a process obviously going through that wholesale license and getting AFSL and all that sort of stuff and um, launched a bit over a year ago and really just focused on businesses that uh, are in the B2B space so provide the services to the bookmaking industry um, because they're not really as covered by the big institutions as um, as the main uh, B2C operators and um, and I feel that I've got a unique understanding of those businesses and then also businesses that have got exposure to the uh, to the US market and so yeah, it's been really exciting and, and obviously been a great great year for us and and yeah betmakers um was actually our first investment in the fund um we invested before that deal a bit over a year ago and we just really liked it because it's such an interesting business because it's been around for quite a while and it was a um basically an online bookmaker but then they pivoted a few years ago and, and realized that that area was being more highly taxed and they got into this b2b space and and Todd and the team there were able to get some two businesses that all the bookmakers used, which provide the odds and the data and, and all of the information you need as a bookmaker, and were able to package these two businesses together and basically broaden it from just being an Australia-focused business to providing racing data to the UK, to the US. And I felt that I had unique expertise having run William Hill and known what these businesses meant to a big corporate bookmaker like that. Uh, we couldn't have run the business without those services and, and um, just thought, well, they're in a unique space in that there's so many providers around the world. You see the likes of uh, Bet Genius, Sports Raider, valued at billions of dollars and they provide this sports content, but there aren't many providers providing racing content. It's really actually only bet makers and, and thought, well, this is a growing area. It's an area I know well and, and, um, and we're just really looking for business we can be long term shareholders in and, and that was the first of them. So Tom, give us a bit of insight into the, uh, the funds details. Uh, what have you got in terms of funds under management at the moment and uh, what kind of returns are you looking to go and deliver for investors? Uh, look, we've got around $10 million, $10 million funds under management and we're not really, uh, to me, if whether it was $10 million or less or more, I'm not really, it's, uh, I'm just doing what I would do myself and, uh, and how the family would invest in the gambling space. Uh, obviously, I think most people would think investing in the gambling industry is, is a lot more risky uh, than, but uh, for us, we like to put a large portion of our funds that we invest in the space because we know it. But I, I guess for gambling's been around since the, well, for thousands of years, I, and I, I think it'll be forever. Um, and we think of it as a very robust, like counter cyclical industry. and, and to have a small portion of your portfolio in, in the gambling sector is, uh, I don't think is, is silly. And um, uh, I guess the types of businesses, like so our main investments in the gambling space are bet makers. So it's a small cap company. It's provided really great return to the fund, but when you're dealing with a company, this was before they raised the 35 million um, just recently. It's a business that's, that wasn't as robust or big when we invested. So it can be a bit more risky. But then we're in businesses like um, Flutter, which is the, owns Fangil in the US. It's uh, got probably the most dominant scale position in, in the US, the UK, Australian market with sports bet here and bet easy. So that uh, obviously is not as risky maybe as going into more um, smaller cap business. And then we're in Playtech, which is a, provides a lot of the casino products for the operators around the world. It's got the deal in the US now with Bet365. Um, 
uh, again, I don't view them as, as risky, but I think as an investor, uh, you've got to, I think being diversified is probably quite sensible and having a portion of your portfolio and gambling is probably makes somewhat sense. Uh, Tom, I think probably two of the questions which you probably get quite often, so it'd be interesting how you address them uh, in terms of concerns people might have. Firstly, regulatory risk, which you did address yep. a bit, um, and secondly, from an ethical perspective. Um, yep. So in, to run into, uh, in terms of a regulatory perspective, we look at the only business we look at or have looked at uh, are businesses that demonstrate that they can win the scale war. So we really liked um, Flutter because not only were they dominant in the UK and the Australian market, but we thought their acquisition, we invested in them obviously before they uh, partnered up uh, with uh, like PokerStars in, in terms of like their deal with Foxbet in the US. But uh, the thing that we really liked about them is that they, they deal with FanDuel, they bought in at scale, they had like 8 million active accounts already, they had a large team, they had the biggest marketing budget, they already had over 40% market share in the US. So they clearly demonstrate that they are likely scale winners. So they can cope with the increased regulatory, uh, whether it's tougher in terms of product fees or taxes or increased marketing costs, because I think that's inevitable in regulated markets. And then we love focusing on the B2B space, which is uh, obviously it has some exposure to regulation, but it's much more shielded because it provides the services to these operators. They get hit through the top line through their tax, but they still need these providers, whether it's casino product or racing product like betmakers. Uh, and in terms of an ethical point of view, well, I love gambling. Um, so I have got no ethical issue uh, at all with the space. I, I, I absolutely love it. And, and, um, and I think that's our biggest advantage in that you speak to a lot of the big banks and institutions and they can't invest in it or they don't want to look at it. And um, if I'm going up against the big institutions uh, looking at, I don't know, some mining stock or Google or Apple, well, that's hard. Sticking to a, an area that I've lived my whole life and is the only thing I, I live and breathe, well, I'd rather do that and, and hope that no one else is looking at it. Tom Waterhouse from Waterhouse Adventure Capital, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. Enjoy Thanks. your weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Tom.